You're listening to Disrobing the Mosh Pit, a dissection of music and popular culture, with your hosts, Pete and Tom. Howdy, howdy, how are we going? All good. Hello. Hey, nice, to, nice to see you again, yeah, Pete. And nice, you, Tom. Nice to hang again. Welcome everyone to the second episode of, of Disrobing the Mosh Pit. I'm Tom. And I'm, I'm Pete. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, full disclosure: we did a previous recording of the second session um, where we got a little bit too excited with the <laughs> alcohol review. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say, but we, after a, a bit of deliberation, we've gone back and a few different edits. We've decided to actually re-record it. So, yes, yeah, yeah. we figured it was. It was two hours long, mm. and um, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. there's a lot of uh, inane babble. Is yeah, that's how right. I describe it. Yeah, and eight hours of editing with a hangover <laughs> is is uh, that's no joke, man. That's that's a tough job. Maybe we just covered some topics that maybe we shouldn't have covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe that's one for the archives. So there's a, a B side that we that you guys can check out later on. We'll probably put it up somewhere a bit later on. Mm. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to try to do the same. Topic again and uh, hit the same kind of points, but in a much more concise kind of manner. Mm, mm. So that's where that's where we are right now. Full disclosure: we were thinking about trying a few new things from now mm. onwards. One of those things you guys may have noticed that we quite often discuss pieces of music in the first episode. Um, we refer to interesting tracks and soundtracks, but. Uh, we discovered the, actually the original had those pieces of music fading in and out, didn't they, Pete? Mm, mm. But we did actually, uh, it occurred to us that there was, of course, a copyright issue. So one thing we're going to maybe toy with is instead of playing the original music, having that fade in and out, maybe have a go at an a cappella version fading in and out. Wonderful. <laughs> Very boys to men esque. See if that triggers copyright, because frankly, if it does, I'm going to be pretty, pretty flattered. No, I, I don't know. If, if, can, does singing off key, does that, <laughs> does that trigger copyright? <laughs> or really poorly interpreted lyrics? It'll be amazing if we get slammed with a cease and desist. I I reckon. W- yeah, that would be almost worth it. <laughs> almost <laughs> yeah. worth it. Yeah. yeah. So um, another thing that we wanted to take a, a bit of a swing at was, I guess, coming in and having a bit of a, a snapshot of where we're listening. At the, where our listening is at at the moment, maybe a bit of a mm. um, a bit of a taster of not just what we're sampling in terms of alcohol, but also what what has been on rotation for us throughout this last week. Yeah. So, what about you, Pete? What have you been listening to that's new? Uh, probably well, the thing I've been thrashing probably the most recently is a bit of Anderson Pack mm. and Teskey Brothers. Well, the probably the two things that I could probably think of. Offhand. Teskey Brothers. What are, what are those guys like? Teskey Brothers are sort of like a a blue. I'd say blues. They're sort of a bluesy type uh, quad. Is that even a thing? Quad. A quad. Yeah, like a four piece. A four piece. Yeah, <laughs> a quad. <laughs> I like quad it's better. Good. Um it should be. A thing. Yeah, it should be a thing. Well, why not? You have a trio. Yeah. Why couldn't you have a quad? <laughs> totally. <laughs> or a pint. Totally. <laughs> Teskey Brothers. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you played some before. I yeah, I did. Play. Yeah, yeah. So there's a song, I think it's been recorded in Australia on a radio station called Triple M, and they do a really awesome version, well, in my opinion, of a song uh, of theirs, which is called I Get Up, and I really love it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. How about you, Tom? What, what's uh, What's been on your high rotation uh, at your house. Well, there's a there's one of my favourite bass players, a guy called Pino Palladino, and uh, he actually is like probably one of the one of the greatest bass players that you have never realised you've been listening to. He's sort of he's a, what they call a session player. For those of you who who haven't come across that term before, it's someone who whose job is basically getting called into studios and um. Kind of just a recording artist who is credited, but not necessarily, you know, you might play for an artist like Taylor Swift or Steely Dan or, um, in his case, Paul Young was one of the early ones. But he's done everything from like Nine Inch Nails to playing with John Mayer and, of course, um, D'Angelo, too, part of Mm -hmm. D'Angelo's band. So Mm -hmm. phenomenal bass player. And he's done an album called Notes with Attachments, which has just come out um, as of... 
well, you know, a, a few months ago, well, 2020 it came out, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. We're now in 2021. But So the album's called Notes of the Attachments and he put it out with this guitarist called Blake Mills. Blake Mills, who's produced such stuff as um, some of Fiona Apple's stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty phenomenal too. Amazing, amazing guitarist and artist. Awesome. Yeah, one of my favourite drummers, Chris Dave, as well, is playing on that. So Notes with Attachments, it's pretty experimental. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a bit of a delve into the unknown, but mm-hmm. I think um, if you're interested in giving something a new spin, then give that one a go. Cool. I've been digging it. That sounds awesome. Mm. Cool. So um, moving on to the actual topic of what we wanted to discuss mm-hmm. today, <clears throat> um, the more refined version. <laughs> Just to recap, last time we discussed the music of films, mm-hmm. um, which was a lot of fun. This time it's a bit of a it's a bit of a broad topic, isn't mm. it? Really, it's actually kind of hard to put into words. You, you, you know, your um, pausing there is testament to that. We want to investigate <clears throat> and discuss whether music can be bad, and music can be good. Mm. You know, or is it inherently good, or is it inherently not good? Mm. Um, <clears throat> I thought I might kind of play devil's advocate a little bit for this one, because someone's natural tendencies might be to say. I think the music that I like is good. I don't like that kind of music because it's bad. So even though I know how I feel about it, I thought I might argue for the sake of arguing mm-hmm. <laughs> to try and get some, <laughs> get some interesting things. Are you trying to pick a fight with me? <laughs> out of the convo. Let's take this out, <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, Pete? What do you think? <clears throat> do you think that stuff, music can be bad? Well, first of all, I guess if you were going to be, because we can all do this, we can all be guilty of saying like, ugh, oh, that's bad and no, I'm not going to listen to that. That's mm. going to make me change the channel, change the station. What would make you want to change the station? What would make me want to change the station? Um, that's a really good question. I I don't know if there's such a thing as good music and bad music. Ooh. Uh, mm. I think all music is very subjective. Good music is subjective and bad music is subjective, and it depends on the person mm. and what they like. Um, for example, I would probably turn off the edge. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not that I'm bagging the edge. Well, I kind of am, but mm. <clears throat> personally I am. Maybe it's just because of music that I don't understand and maybe it's something that doesn't speak to me. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Mm. It just means that it's not to my taste. Mm. Mm. So I know <clears throat> from conversations with you before you tend to like music with a lot more, with a lot of integrity in it, right? That's kind of yes, sort of not all the time though. Oh yeah, no, not all the time. I mean, I I, I think we've discussed this before. Where I I like in a uh, future episode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like is it like back to, back the, to future? the future? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great so who's Doc Brown and who's Marty <laughs> in this particular episode? Well, maybe I'm George. Yeah, Fine. yeah. I want to be that bully guy. <laughs> Biff. Biff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I suppose this could be more classed as a guilty pleasure as opposed to being bad, although some people could definitely class it as bad. But I quite like Westlife. Oh, yeah. Well, I did. And maybe I kind of still do. This is quite yeah. awkward. But yes. Okay, well, let me let me ask you this. Like, you've got little ones. I think, like, if, if someone came home and said that they're playing some music, and you were like, "Nah, why are you listening to that?" What what kind of kind of music would make you want to turn the radio off or turn the stereo off and say, "No, no, no, no you're not listening to that." I really, I'm finding it hard to even come up with one example of that. I'm, uh, I'm sure that there is an example. To be fair, like I'm probably like. Oh, you want to listen to this, like, but I'm not sure if I've viewed it as it's bad and I don't want to listen to it because it's bad. It's more that I'm not really in the mood to be open minded to it, okay, at the time, yeah. yeah. Well, what about some of the classics that adults might perceive as being pretty challenging, like Crazy Frog, for example? Yeah, I suppose you could probably, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm adults, I. We are add-ons, though. Yeah. So are you talking about a generation ahead or even two generations ahead? I think what I'm getting at is I know that you're someone who values integrity with regards to lyrics and instrumentation and and playing and that kind of stuff. I know that you're not willing to say that something that doesn't have those is necessarily bad, Mm. but I know that you're probably not going to want to listen to something that um, is totally devoid of those things. Yeah. And Crazy Frog 
kind of is totally devoid of those things. It's very shallow, in yeah. my opinion. Shallow, that's the operative word, I think, that we're looking for yeah. here. You can't really dig down into it. Okay. You know, like, I, I'm a big, I appreciate music uh, that I can listen to and there's a real backstory to it. You know what I mean? Um, and I, it's even better if you have to try a bit harder to get into it. Like, that, a, you, like a game on... on yeah, on totally. Game, game, game. I, I reckon you get more out of it. It's like, it's like you know, if you have to try a bit harder at anything, the, the payoff seems to be greater. And I think the same sort of thing applies to music. You know, if you climbed Mount Everest, for example, and I'm using a massive example here, but, you know, a lot of effort has to go into even getting to that point. Mm. And the payoff is huge. Yeah. And I think the same kind of applies in the same vein in music. You know, when you have to work a little bit harder to appreciate it, I think you get a greater payoff from it. That's a really interesting perspective. Whereas, you know, when you think about Crazy Frog, for example, mm. <clears throat> you, you can definitely take it on that, that sort of face value element and it's, um, yeah, it's superficially catchy, but mm. if you dug down into it, is there much underneath? You know, we were talking about being shallow before. Yeah, so yeah. you're using words like shallow and, and shallow, like superficial. We're talking about Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the shallow, you know. <laughs> oh, the shallows. Yeah, my bad. Oh, so... In that case, you know, if this song, Crazy Frog, and, and hopefully we'll find another example to move on to, does that make it bad? That's the question here. Does that make it bad? Why, like, you know, technically is it not as good as the songs that you've mentioned before? Stuff like um, artists who have more depth to their lyrics and their themes and their, and their recording process and that kind of stuff. Is it bad compared to that stuff? No. <clears throat> no, because it, I think you uh, there are people that still appreciate it, you know, for what it is, and in that respect, it's not bad. But there are people who also appreciate different political views, mm. you know, that you might think are bad and controversial. But yes, totally, yeah. So um, you know, do you feel like? That gives you the the you then have the right to say that it's bad. Well, no, probably not. And as I say, as we sort of like touched on at the very beginning of this podcast, it is subjective. Yeah. Um. So, what I think about certain songs won't necessarily translate to what other people think about certain songs or the same songs, right? Mm. Um. Otherwise, we'd all be very homogenous. In totally. No way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think kind of what you're. What we're kind of getting at a little bit is that the diversity is something that should be celebrated. Mm, totally. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How about you? Your thought? What, what's your thoughts on good music and bad music? Do you have something that you think is really good and really bad? I know what I think is uh, kind of high quality in my mind. Are you talking about production, or no, are you talking about? I, th- I guess I'm, I'm talking about the idea right. behind behind the song. And I know uh, if I'm if I'm contextualizing it by conversations with my kids, because mm-hmm. this is someone who you are invested in their future and their development and you know their musical tastes and aesthetic and that kind of stuff as well. I mean, mm-hmm. it's amazing when they go off and do their own thing. That's cool. It's amazing when they start to think for themselves. That's really good. But as a parent, you sort of try to you know help them on the right or what you think is the right kind of way. Do you um, think you do that with music with your kids? I definitely do, but I'm usually quite. I don't feel very good doing that. <laughs> right, it's a vaguely unheaded. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And and it's little things, man. Like to be honest, my son might might bring me the iPad and go, "Dad, check out this track. How cool is this? Do you think it's cool?" And I'm like, "Nah," <laughs> but I know that my opinion matters to him. And then afterwards, I'm sort of going, "Man, he was trying to like show me that he connects with this piece of music." And I wrote it off for being bad mm-hmm. because it doesn't, you know, it's not in line with with what I think is is quality kind of music. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. Maybe it was too repetitive. Maybe it sounded it sounded like it was done without much thought to, um, you know, different musical devices. Yep, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny what we actually superimpose <clears throat> onto music of our own experiences and then call it bad. For example, um. 
there are particular beats from the 90s, some synonymous with bands like uh, M People, you know, uh, is, is it in people's it moving on up yeah yeah moving yeah. On, oh, thank God. yeah um and i don't like those beats do you like in people no no nah. would you class it as bad music tom I definitely wouldn't class it as bad music but i wouldn't listen to it ah. i don't know why maybe it's because something i love about finding out new music is boldness and risk taking mm-hmm. and kind of like a freshness and for me those kind of beats that that band has are kind of they feel kind of stagnant how about fine young cannibals Ooh, you to- fine young cannibals well, his voice is something pretty special eh? mm. and that, the that? pop snare i would have thought you'd been right all over that oh yeah 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 what's that what's that she drives me crazy yeah Classic stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I've got this um, preconceptions about what, you know, is good and what is bad. Um, but after I do have that reaction to something that someone plays me, afterwards I'm always a little bit like, man, I should have just been more into that, mm-hmm. you know, especially when you're talking about people who are like family or, or loved ones. Um, you know, I've been in the situation before where friends might, as you would have too, where friends will play something that they've done. And, That's awkward. Um, that is a bit awkward. Well, it eh? can be really awkward. Yeah. It, you sort of tense up when before they start playing it because <laughs> you like go, this could go one of two ways. Yeah. <laughs> this could either be really quite bad and I'm going to have to put on a face and go, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> or it's genuinely great and you go, I love that. Yeah. Again, very subjective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had that? Have you had that experience where people have gone, yeah, Tom, I really, really want you to listen to this. And they've started playing, you go, mm, this is more, yeah, this is really good. You don't have to name names. You don't have to name names. Where, where I've basically had to pretend that I liked it. Yeah. Is what you're saying? Um, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that's happened. That's happened. Of course a lot. you would in your line of work. I mean, but, 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 but like, that's just, um, I, 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 unless they asked me to pick it apart based on my own aesthetic, I think I'd probably just always say, I think it sounds good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. A, because uh, cause actually, you don't actually stand, no one stands to benefit from you saying that it, you don't like it. Because as you say, it's so subjective. Yeah, but then wouldn't someone feel a bit better? I mean, I know it hurts on face value, but if you are at least honest about your criticism, wouldn't that be better? No. Ah. Because not if someone's played me something that, no, no, because this is an interesting thing, man. This is how like music ties into identity. You have been jamming Westlife, right? And you're like, it's you, you really are so into it. And Say I'm like, part of Westlife. Just, just totally. For, well, well, that's that's what I mean. I, I actually think that it's so strongly tied to who we are, music, that you don't actually have to be part of the band. You know, maybe you own a Westlife T-shirt, and that's how. Well, into I'm not going to say are. whether or not I do. But <laughs> you own like Westlife undies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you own a piece of clothing with Westlife on mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. you're willing to project the fact that you, even if it is undies, and it's under your garments, and you're like, you feel confident and proud that your mm. loins are girded with this <laughs> special Westlife font for the whole day. Yeah. Um, but you, you <laughs> but we're if, you, if, if you care enough about that, and if you care enough about Westlife to do that, then you're going to feel a little bit hurt if I say that they suck. Do you um, think it's because it's so um, uh, really tied in with your own personality and ego that you're sort of crushing a bit of someone's personality and ego by being critical? Yeah, probably. But yeah. don't you think um, being yeah. honest to someone – I mean, I know that – okay, so – Yes, it, it definitely hurts receiving criticism, but uh, you're not allowing someone the opportunity to grow without it. But what have you got to? I mean, because I'm it not is being so saying you should launch a withering attack on no, someone. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but I think that um, what have we got to gain from from saying that we just kind of don't like it? You know, because I guess well, you're being dishonest. Yeah, yeah. I guess you've got if, a good if point. Deep obsession said. <laughs> have a listen to my song. I haven't you are my more. one, my <laughs> one and only. And you're like, oh, yeah, no. Would you, you know, would you crush, the, crush the hopes and dreams? Well, Tom? well, I would be firstly flattered that they would think that it, my opinion would be something that mattered. Wow. 
But I guess you hold them in high esteem. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you know, you, you know, it, it, it's so subjective. I guess what I th- what I think is, when someone asks me to listen to something and tell me what they what I think of it, I kind of think that um, it doesn't matter if I don't like it to them. Uh, what's what's a better way of saying it? It's almost like it's tokenistic. Me me, my reply will be t- tokenistic no matter what. So it just makes sense to just keep them feeling positive about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, there's nothing really to gain other than if, if they said something like, what would you do to this kick EQ or what would you do to the level of the guitar? Or Then I would be honest. But if they were like, do you like this? Does this sound good to you? Is this like good music or good songwriting? Um, it's different if it's a student because if it's a student, I'd be – more like you know open to basically saying you know this is not ideal you know we're working on a formula here we want to have a catchy hook or depending mm-hmm. what, we, what the aims are but if it's a friend man i'm just kind of like you know, i see what you're getting at yeah. i see what you're getting at because you still want to foster the mm. you know and you never know just because one one particular track or one particular song may not be amazing mm. doesn't mean that the next one couldn't be great and if you yeah. crush them at this particular stop, you may have crushed all of them, you yeah. know, all of them down the track. Yeah. Yeah. What happens if if you go to someone and, like, so who's who's your like, pinnacle of, like, good music? You're just like, this is good. Oh, I don't really know. Okay, so we've got these, I guess, these categories, right? I'm so really, you, I think there's a theme developing in these podcasts where you ask me a question about music <laughs> and I've got no idea. <laughs> Like so useless. Yeah, well, let's let's look at the things that you've you've said that you think are important, like integrity with the lyrics, eh? Yeah, I integrity guess. of the lyrics. And, and sort of a depth that takes a little bit of um, working through so mm-hmm. you feel a bit more connected and kind of engaged with it. Maybe it's something like not being too repetitive. Is mm. that something else? Yeah. Not sounding too homogenous. But then you kind of want a bit of repetition. I think naturally as humans we sort of do it. You yeah. Know? I, obviously, you know, when we think – well, not obviously, but – when we think about like the sort of standard songwriting format, you know, there's mm. verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and maybe a bridge, mm. and maybe another chorus at the end, right? So that's a general sort of song layout. Yeah. Um, what the hell was I saying there? Are you saying that we want to have some re- some repetition? Yeah. So I mean, you wouldn't have a have three rounds of choruses yeah. in a standard layout of song if you didn't want repetition as a human. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, I guess I'm just thinking of the whole crazy frog thing, the, the, just, the, just the, the really just like persistent, that kind of. Well, that, I mean, that sort of, I suppose that's sort of the underlying chorus, if you will, yeah. throughout the whole thing. And a lot of that sort of electronic music has that, doesn't it? True, for yeah. sure. So, so given the fact that there are these, these factors that you, that you use to categorise good music in your head, mm-hmm. who's an artist that you think is? Well, someone like D'Angelo, for example. Okay. Okay, cool. So why do you like D'Angelo? Why is that good music? I think his songs are extremely well crafted. Mm. You know, aside from uh, the production value, which is obviously extremely high, Yeah. but I think the way that he crafts music is, is great. Yeah. How about okay. you, Tom? Like, what, what would you say? Let's go with D'Angelo as okay. well, because I, I think that, you know, obviously he's, he cares a lot about the um, the soul of the music and a lot about the playing and the performance. Mm-hmm. I mean, far out. They reckon it's like, Got to be on your bucket list to seeing him live. Um, obviously, um, he's pretty an epic performer, multi instrumentalist, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But how about this? Okay, so you've got D'Angelo and you've got a D'Angelo album. Let's just say it's like a, a voodoo. Um, is Brown Sugar? That's one of his albums. Eh? Brown mm-hmm. Sugar. Uh, and Black Messiah. Black Messiah. Uh, Black Messiah is one of his latest ones. Yeah. Okay. So Black Messiah, which is also amazing. If you took this to someone and you said, "Let's listen to this now," and they took it off and said, ugh, no, 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 I don't like that at all. What would you say to them, uh, you know, if you wanted them to carry on listening to it, what would you say? I don't know. It's very difficult to persuade people around because musical taste is so personal, Mm. right? And, you know, obviously amongst your peers, you'll probably have a a shared uh, love of certain music. But I don't know... I don't know if talking people round to music is a is a thing like that you yep. can really do. Yeah. Well, you, we probably could give it a go, but people are going to like what they like, you know. Yeah. 
you know, someone could love Crazy Frog and you play them D'Angelo and they're like, no, nah, D'Angelo sucks. Like, yeah. You know, and that could be, and, and that's totally valid too, right? And that's probably the majority of people, eh, to be honest. Well, and you know? this is the thing, like, people just want something to listen to in their car yeah. on the way to work. Yeah. You know, or, you know, walking down the street totally. with headphones on. You know, and yeah. maybe Crazy Frog gives them the, the pump that they want, you know? Yeah. We use, I think... Bottom line, we use music for different things. Totally. I mean, it's like books, man. Mm. Like, you know, the difference between something like uh, Harry Potter and, I don't know, the... Wait, which one? You've got to be specific. Well, let's go with, let's go <laughs> with the philosopher, Philosopher's Stone, right? <laughs> the very first one. Yeah. Um, and what was the Eleanor Catton book, the... So now we're talking about trashy, no, not trashy, but literature for the masses. Okay, Mills and Boone. Mills and Boone, the difference between Mills and Boone and Eleanor Catton. Okay. Maybe not, like, oh, I'm going to yeah. try and find out what this is now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. So we're getting into what we call highbrow art versus lowbrow art kind the of luminaries, thing. The luminaries, the luminaries. The yeah. luminaries, yeah, yeah, yeah. Made into a series. The series was a bit slow. But isn't that always the way with, yeah. with uh, translation from book to film? yeah. You know, yeah, it's a tricky one, eh? It is a real tricky one. I mean, The Shawshank Redemption, mm. although that is a great standalone film, mm. in my opinion, mm. um, but that's a Stephen King book. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I imagine that in a lot of cases, people probably think the book's a lot better than the film because, I mean, you can only cram so much into an hour and a half. But it's like the highest rated movie on IMDb, isn't it's it? It's so good. Yeah. It's epic. In my opinion. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so music is... Both good and bad, or music is, or not good, nor is it bad. Essentially, one person doesn't have a right to say that the music someone else listens to is bad. I agree. Is that where we're going? Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. You, can, you don't necessarily have to like it, yeah. but you can't criticise or be critical about someone's choices of music. Yeah. Right, because you, know, you might love Slipknot yeah. and have be real... Um, derogatory mm. because someone else likes deep obsession, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, I'm just using that example. That's a good example, man. Mm. Like I work in a tertiary environment, a tertiary learning environment, and I actually love it when students say, oh, no, that's shit. No, I hate that music. No, because it starts that conversation. Oh, why is that shit? But do you reckon, though, that people say that they, oh, man, I hate this music. It's horrible, horrible. Mm. But then they would sift away and put it on on Spotify, <laughs> like a little hidden playlist or something. I don't know. Go home, light a bath. Yeah. Well, oh, sorry, sorry, run a bath, light some candles, <laughs> light yeah, a bath, put, yeah. Put, some, put, put a bath some, bomb in. Yeah, oh, bath, beautiful. put a bit of deep obsession. Oh, deep obsession. Some, <laughs> massage some, uh, lemon, some peppermint oil. Get some Lindau there. Brut going. <laughs> and then, you know. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. yeah. So, okay. That's, uh, that's a guilty pleasure, what you'd call guilty pleasures, yeah. right? What would you class as a – what is a guilty pleasure in <clears throat> terms of music? Okay. And do okay. you have any? Do you, do you know what? Pleasure? Do you know what? A guilty pleasure, I think, is – okay, we have our, like, profile when it comes to the music that we listen to. Certainly when we're teenagers. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit – maybe a little bit um, philosophical on this. Please. Okay. Socrates. So when we're teenagers, we use music. Um, you know, we use it to identify with other people. We use it to help solidify our ideals. You know, so if there's an act that we kind of, a lot of us do, not all of us, but if there's someone that we, um, you know, the lyrics, we kind of connect to them. We're mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, yeah, we lock onto that because teenagers are often kind of like struggling, kind of looking for ways to build their identity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> self actualization you know, ways to sort of feel included and to feel part of a bigger you know, totally. yeah, group of people. So <clears throat> we sort of develop this musical profile. It's the stuff that we listen to. You know, some people might be, oh, I'm a metalhead. I'm into hip-hop. I'm into, you know, and, and to, to varying levels. Do you think we consciously do it or subconsciously do it? We, I think it I Do think we it consciously depends. like identify with a certain peer group or do we subconsciously identify with a certain peer group? I think it depends, but I think that we all know that the music that we listen to says something about us, you know, as mm -hmm. teenagers, okay? So we're, so we're all like, um, you know, I like this artist, therefore you can assume this about me. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, there's this set of ideals that we have. So here's a bit of a theory. A guilty pleasure 
is music that we like that is outside of that set of ideals that mm-hmm. we have. So it's outside of the normal sphere of music that we kind of listen to, and it's so far out that it might be totally opposing ideals to the music that we normally listen to. So we feel guilty listening to it. We shouldn't. I mean, our friends aren't going to necessarily make us feel guilty listening to it, but part of us is a little bit like, oh, this is, a, this is quite, you know. That's an interesting point you've put on there. So do you think a guilty pleasure is defined by our peer group? I think that we, <clears throat> I think that we make our own musical identity. You know, um, and, and, and part of the function of that is to situate ourselves within a peer group. You know, but totally, the peer group would have something to do with it. So, know? for example, if you were, dare I say it, your your peer group was a bunch of bogans, mm. and you were like siftily off listening to the Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah, and and that becomes a guilty pleasure because of how you would think that your peer group would perceive you if you they found out you're listening to Spice Girls? Totally, because of the ideals that you know you align yourself with when you listen to heavy metal. Mm-hmm. And you know that might be rawness, anti-authority, you know, aggression, nothing to do with love or anything like that. Who was the um, example that you used? The Deep Obsession. Deep Obsession, yeah. Yeah, maybe Deep Obsession are like the commercial kind of, you know, that's the... Um, you know, that's so commercial. So in, into um, it's nothing to do with aggression or anything like that. So well, you know, almost the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Totally the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> Barry Manilow and <laughs> you know. Yeah, I got a good friend who so no, no, no. is an, a, a good friend who's an amazing like uh, drummer. He's he's like a really full on heavy metal player, a blazing fast, and he was really into all kinds of metal stuff growing up. But I know for a fact that he used to go into his room and thrash Alanis Morissette, like, often, (laughs) often. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm 100% behind it, but that was something that he was going to do. Jagged Little Pill was something that he really loved. Yeah, that was totally. That was something that he was going to do behind closed doors. For a while, anyway, you know, until you get confident, until you become an adult and you sort of get confident, you're like, damn, I'm a big Alanis fan, you know, and you're happy with people knowing that about you. Mm -hmm, But I think mm -hmm. while we're teenagers – and we're not so open to being 100% vulnerable mm-hmm. in front of people because I think maybe these guilty pleasures expose our vulnerabilities a little bit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm actually quite into deep obsession. I love a good love song. I love a good, you know, you, 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 but I guess something that probably would be a bit of a guilty pleasure would be Enigma. Enigma, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, yeah is Enigma. It, is it the um, Return to Innocence? That one. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, just like crazy exploitation (laughs) of world music. You know, just like, oh my God. Love, devotion. (laughs) It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I mean, love, yeah. But but still, it's a bit of a jam. Is it bad though, Tom? Is it bad? Yeah, man, that's bad. <laughs> oh, I struggle to say that it's good, you know? Like, uh, someone but you who, love so, it, though, someone, so it's going to be good. I know, but someone who's like, oh, Enigma, that is good, good music. I can't say 100% that I want to hang out with that person. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I accept online. Maybe if someone's like, yeah, Enigma's a guilty pleasure of mine too, I'd be like, Bones. Me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if they're just like, oh, man, I've got like three Enigma shirts. I'm wearing my Enigma undies right now. <laughs> I'll be like, ah, oh, cool. Oh, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about you, man? What about some good features? Uh, well, we've already talked about Westlife. Um, For sure. I really like or liked Veruca Salt. Oh, that's cool. Do you remember that? There's yeah, a yeah. song called Volcano Girls. Yeah, 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 cool. Love, I still love it, actually. Like, yeah. When I listen to it, it's like, that's great. Um, this is an unusual one, but I really like the song by Paddy Page yeah. called Old Cape Cod. Paddy Page, Old Cape Cod. Yeah. I think this might be a good opportunity for us to go back and sing this one yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. So I won't attempt it now. And I, I have a funny feeling, well, where I heard it first was in the movie Die Hard 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's when I think John McClane comes through a ventilation shaft into uh, sort of a maintenance area and he meets that guy, Norm. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Norm's got... Has he got the ponytail? 
Is that no, the I one? think he's bald. Okay. He's yeah. a bald guy. Yeah. So, you know, Mr. McLean, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like Iwo Jima, that guy. <laughs> awesome. and, um, anyway, he's on his record player, he's got Petty Page, Old Cat Cot yeah. on there. There's something about that song, it sort of it brushes on the nostalgia a bit, but I can fully get down with it. There's just something really, for me, I don't know, it's really weird. Like, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I have got a real soft spot for the 50s. I was not born in the 50s. Mm-hmm. But um, there's something about the austerity of the 50s that uh, sort of tugs an emotional string with me. Yeah, very styly time. Very much so, mm. um, but I just yeah, and I, I'm not entirely sure if Patty Page comes from the fifties to mm. be fair, but uh, it's a, around that time. Maybe she might even been a bit earlier than that. But um, there's something about that that sort of like springs that in me. Yeah, uh, particularly like you know, sort of nineteen fifties America is very. I don't know. It's that's kind weird. of that's kind of cool though, man. Like I don't know if that's like a guilty pleasure. You know what I mean? Well, I find I'm, I feel fairly guilty. Do you? Well, a little bit. <laughs> Patty yeah. Page and Party Hard by Andrew WK. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was more going into town, down. so maybe that was a little, <laughs> get me all fired up. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Hey, maybe it's time to do some tasting notes. Oh, I yeah. thought you'd never ask. Yeah, awesome. So tell us a little about what we're drinking. Tonight. Well, actually, yeah, you Pete. provided the uh, the beverage that we're drinking this evening, Tom. I did. And uh, what a fantastic choice, too. So Tom has chosen... Brave Brewery Tiger Milk. And I'm sure that a lot of our listeners have tried it. I'd hope you have. If you haven't, you should. Absolutely delicious. Oh, it's uh, fantastic. It's yeah. an IPA. It's, it's brewed in Hastings. Um, they they my have... My wife, I believe. Yeah, they, they have like a they have like a, a burger joint attached to it, right? Well, it's, it's all one thing now. Yeah, it's, okay. Yeah, but yep. yes. And it actually just goes so well with that kind of fear yeah, like burgers wings that kind of stuff um, but I always actually look for Brave Tiger Milk on restaurant menus me too actually yeah and me too like, boom you get it. I can probably name some of the restaurants in town that, that have it yeah does it make you quite proud that a, mm. a beer that was made in Hastings slash that is Hastings mm. um, is just so good yeah I really like it I, I and I have to say, Tom, that I, it's probably my most favourite beer that I'd like to drink. Nice. Brave Tiger Milk. Nice. Yeah. Um, my wife's cousin, uh, he's actually got a Tiger Milk shirt. I keep meaning to ask him where he, where he got it from. Brave Tiger Milk shirt. I'd imagine if we actually called the brewery, they'd probably sell some to us. Yeah, if you went out there, Tom, you could definitely buy the Tiger Milk merchandise. They've got yeah. little cups, like Do coffee they? cups. Yeah. Anyway, I'll give it a go. this is a side. Mm. What are you getting from this, Tom? Well, the back says citrus. I don't want to read off the back, but... Um, if you feel that you need to, do. Well, now that I read it, that's kind of what I'm what I'm tasting um, and smelling as well. Uh, it's, it is it is really fruity, but there's kind of like a there's kind of like a girthiness to this is this one as well that I kind of um, you know the aftertaste isn't too bitter. No. I, I often get that from these craft beers where it's kind of like you have the bitter aftertaste and you're kind of like, oh, that was pretty good. I don't know how many of those I could drink though, but it just goes down so easily. Too many hops in the boil. Yeah, that's okay. apparently what it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you go, you go too early too soon. Uh, we'll get yeah. to know these guys nail it. They definitely nail it and. And every one is so good. Yeah. So well done you, Brave yep. Brewery. That's on Brave. We'll be back. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So back to this now. Mm. Uh, so we've been talking about guilty pleasures. We've also been talking about the fact that everyone has this idea of what's bad, what is good. Can you judge someone, Pete, based on their musical preference? What do you think? What you mean, personality-wise? Yeah, uh, you know, if, I think if, you get a feel for someone's personality you get a for feel. what they yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think that's a judgment necessarily. Totally. Um, you know, if someone some things are safe topics, some things aren't safe topics to bring up. No, no, and like you know, <laughs> with, with you know, with them, once you find out what they like, well, totally, <clears throat> and whether or not you want to be friends with them. To- oh, see, you know, that's that's kind of that's a big that's a bit of a call there, you know. So, wow, well, this is true. This is true. But you know, I've got to the age now where I just don't want to make any new friends. Really. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, awesome. you, it's hard enough seeing the friends I want to see, let alone, yeah. you know, new friends. I mean, I, you know, I like my, not that I'm saying that I'm super popular or anything, guys. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, you know, I've got a core group of friends that I would yeah. love to see and I don't have the opportunity to see, you know. So, like, yeah. I, I think of it as a concentric circle, right? So, like, the people I really want to see are in the middle and then it sort of, like, spans outwards and... Now, some people are definitely on the outer and some people are definitely on the inner. Yeah. Mm. You're someone who loves music, <clears throat> obviously. Is that a bit of a prerequisite for those people in your inner circle so much I, that I you connect on a musical level, kind of? I don't know if it's consciously a prerequisite, mm. but I think subconsciously it probably is, Yeah. yeah. Um, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it's not something that I have gone out and actively like gone, I'm going to be mates with you because you love music and you've yeah. got a very similar music taste to yeah. me. Because I saw you wearing a D'Angelo shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw you wearing D'Angelo undies. <laughs> and, I, and I knew you would be mates. <laughs> got to get some D'Angelo speedos. Make some friends <laughs> at the beach. Oh, yeah. Well, it's poor. poor <laughs> there's a poor vision in my head. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I mean, if I think to all my close friends anyway, yeah. we all I, I definitely appreciate music, mm. you know, in one way or the mm. other. You, how about you, Tom? Is that what would you say? Um, I kind of like I've got a pretty eclectic musical taste, you know. I mean, as we've sort of discussed as well, you know, what's interesting about that is I don't know how comfortable how how can I put this? I think that if I had friends of mine who liked a certain type of music in the same room as friends of mine who liked another kind of music, maybe my anxiety levels might go up ever, <laughs> ever so slightly, yeah. you know? Because, yeah. it mean, because of what it means. Is it like if you put vegans with meat eaters? Yeah, or you invited a vegan to a barbecue? Yes. If you had hardcore vegans in the same room as someone who, and I know someone like this, and if you're listening... Because he might listen. Tom apologizes. Yeah, no, there's no. But I don't know if there's an apology either, because he'd probably crack up. But you know, if, if if you're getting like a like a hardcore vegan who's in it for political reasons in the same room with someone who basically lives to cue, you know what I mean? Someone yeah. who's just like smoking, <laughs> smoking meat, meat every all day long. weekend. Yeah, um, maybe you know, uh, it's not because they like different music. Okay, okay. So, so, so in this scenario where there are people that diff- listen to different kinds of music, friends of mine that different, listen to two different kinds of music, polarizing kinds of music, it's not because they listen to different kinds of music that my anxiety levels might go up, mm-hmm. but it just so happens that the kind of music they listen to is the metric here. Uh, so I can say they're two different kinds of people. I just don't know if they get along. It's not because of the music. Is it, do you feel the anxiety because you worry that they're going to clash like Clash of Clans in, in the middle <laughs> of your living room? Or that you have to be the conduit between the two yeah, groups of friends? Maybe it is because I have to be the conduit. Maybe it is because these guys will see a side of me that I only show to these guys. <laughs> yeah, you know? You're you know? going to be, as a low being caught in a lie. Of it. Totally, totally, <laughs> man. Hey, yes. totally, man. <laughs> well, it's like getting your work friends involved and then getting your other friends that are part of your drag act that you do at night times <laughs> in the same room and hoping that I really How you know you each other doesn't come up. I really didn't want you to see that I wore Speedos around the house at home. What's that? I really didn't want you to see that I wore Speedos. But I suppose I have to reveal this now. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit like that. So I, th- I feel like I feel like it's so strongly intertwined with our ideals mm. um, that we can potentially do damage by saying that we think the music that someone listens to is bad. I, I, I see your viewpoint. I totally yeah. see your viewpoint. How about Rebecca Black's Friday? Ooh, okay, now we're getting into some interesting stuff. Well, she's definitely used the word there, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, musically, um, I probably have heard a lot more than a lot of other songs that I would call really, like, better musically, you know, just because it became part of what, what everyone listened to for a little while. It, it was viral, right? Yeah, yeah, it was totally viral. Was it viral because it was it was Steve Perry esque in its vocal execution, or do you think it was viral because people really understood that it wasn't that good? It was viral because I think people are inherently pretty mean. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
definitely I partook, you know. So I was kind of like getting in there and and, and kind of laughing about it. But um, have you seen the clips of her lately? No. She can sing, man. She's good. Like she's so like, she didn't actually need that crush. Then. She's all grown up, yeah. I, I think the bad thing about that song was the subject matter. I mean, you're literally talking about stuff that no one gives a shit about. <laughs> It's Friday and, and, and you're getting ready for the weekend. Like, got to get up for school. Um, it's, Again, it's, I don't want to preempt our, yeah. our, our next few podcasts <laughs> we talk about lyrics, but yes. Yeah, it's just not. Andy Schaaf does it when he talks about early to the party, though, doesn't he? Yes. So can we really judge that? He do have a good point. Yeah. I think the I th- video did a lot for it too. Man, I, to you know? be honest, the part that annoyed the most out of me was like twelve year olds driving a car down the road. It's like that's not even legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't I do tell you that. what though, man. Like you're getting ready of... for Friday night to yeah. have Fanta and McDonald's. Totally. Yeah. If you if you want to see a good um, a good rendition of a song like that though, the death metal version of Friday by, Rebe- by Rebecca Black. Obviously, it's performed by someone else. Is so good. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's really good. In what way, Tom? It's just a good metal track, and it's really funny. And mm. they've synced it to the tempo, so it looks like she's singing it, you know. I think I have seen it, actually. It's epic. <laughs> There's another real good one from the Grease, the movie Grease, mm-hmm. yeah, which maybe we can talk about another time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, so the, so the Rebecca Black one, it's a great example. Universally panned. Jeez, I'm surprised that the girl kind of – Got Came through that, from, yeah, without... You well, there know. you go. I mean, she would have been universally panned and, and heavily criticised, no doubt, mm. at the time. And probably, I mean, we're sort of talking about her now in the year 2021. Imagine how thick her skin is now. Well, yeah, yeah, I think, I think in, in any performing arts or in any arts yeah. where you put yourself out for scrutiny, you kind of have to have that element about you. Totally. Because if you... No one's... You're not going to get 100% of people... Liking your things 100% of the time. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, and to go into it with that sort of naivety, I yeah. think you're probably in the wrong profession. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I think, um, you know, that, so that, that raises a good point. I think, you know, when there are things like that that kind of everyone thinks are pretty bad. Um, geez. So are we just going <laughs> against hard. the point? We're like against the point of there's no such thing as bad music, but Rebecca Black was extremely popular. There are some things with the general consensus is like, oh, man, this, this sh- is there for us to laugh at. So, yeah. Yeah. So so let's wrap this up. Yeah, sure. What do you reckon? So music, we know that it's subjective. I don't want to repeat myself too much here. We can't say that it's bad. But I think everyone recognises something that is doesn't deserve to be called good. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm talking, yeah, Rebecca Black. I'm talking kind of your Crazy Frog kind of stuff. Oh, Crazy Frog, which, of course, was so popular. But after a few beers, Tom, I'm sure that you're doing the ying, 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 ying. I'll get down ying, to ying. it. Yeah, I'll fully get down to it. Yeah. yeah. So is it bad? No. If you were hammered at the pub and Rebecca Black's <laughs> Friday came on, you would be I would sing- love to hear yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So therefore, is it oh bad? Oh, my God. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It's not bad. No. It's good. Yeah. I'm think- looking forward to listening to it after this. <laughs> so am I, actually. <laughs> Maybe singing it in. Don't you think that good and bad music uh, depends on the context? Yeah, it depends on the context. And there's, again, we talked about there's no such thing as good or bad music necessarily. Subjectively, yes, because yeah. uh, what you personally think is good or bad, mm. um, and that's fine. Maybe good or bad are the wrong word. Maybe better or worse. Yeah. That's a better way of putting it. Or situational. Yeah. Right? Because if I was hammered at the pub, mm. Mm. or you know, I had a few drinks at the pub, out with my friends, having a great time, Rebecca Black's Friday came mm. on, we are all like arm in arm with each other. Yeah. I'm not sure what sort of pub this is, but mm. we're, we're singing along. We're having a great time. I'm not going to feel sad. Yeah, for definitely sure. not. Having a great time. Yeah. Good music, <laughs> right? Yeah, man. I think we got roundabouts to the point that all music is pretty much good. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <clears throat> definitely. All right, I reckon that's about us. Eh? Hey, thanks, Tom. All right, thanks, awesome. Pete. Hey? See you next time. See you next time. Thanks.